So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my investing portfolio as well as some of the stocks that I am going to be purchasing a little bit more in for the next month. Now, of course, a lot of this is just based off of my preferences and what I have in my portfolio. Uh, so let's kind of just jump right into it and talk about some of this stuff. So I wanna show you guys on my portfolio here on the computer. Um, I'm using M1 Finance. This is my preference when it comes to investing. Um, I do also use Robinhood, but just kind of as a heads up for you there. now. Um, you can see here in my all time, let me tab back there in my all time, uh, we are up $1,732 and 94 cents. Now that is money weighted returns. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, that is whether I've sold some stock for a profit and kept that money in the portfolio. That's essentially all of it. For those who are curious about just the unrealized gains, I'm still up $1,400 and 32 cents. So not too shabby. Um, obviously, the market has been going up quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, um, which honestly also makes it really tough to find stocks that I want to purchase uh, because I'm not getting some great values. So let's kind of go over all of this together, um, just kind of go over everything. So my portfolio currently sits at $11,436.62. So I hit over the $10,000 mark, which is a huge one for me. Um, I actually did videos prior in a previous channel where I was kind of showcasing my journey with investing. Um, and this one is kind of just kind of at this price point or at this point in uh in my portfolio um so my next big big goal is probably going to be like twenty five thousand dollars in this account um this is mainly focused for dividends in the future because i want to have money being able to withdraw if i wanted to um but i am still focusing on growth stocks too because i know people are a little worried on that front as well so let's kind of go and take a look and see some of the companies that maybe i want to be buying into over the next couple of weeks um just because that can change just depending on how the market's moving um I think for a lot of people, it's one of those things where they feel like, well, you know, everything is going up and a lot of companies, like especially those big tech companies are hitting their all time highs, um, which is really tough when it comes to, you know, do I want to keep buying into these companies? Do I feel like they're going to go down? Um, it's always kind of like a point of contention for a lot of investors because they feel like maybe they're going to be wasting their money if the, you know, if the market goes down. But for me, I'm always long term where if I believe in a company and I'm still buying into them right now, it might be for less than I was doing before just because they are at their all time highs. But nonetheless, I might still be investing. So let's kind of go over and see how some of our top performing stocks are doing and maybe some of our worst performing stocks. So uh, let's go ahead and click on unrealized gains. So number one, of course, is going to be Tesla. If you guys have Tesla in your portfolio, let me know in the comments down below. So I'm up 52%. I've also had Tesla in my Robinhood account as well. Um, so this one, my cost basis is definitely a, uh, or not my cost basis, sorry. My average price is a lot higher in this one versus Robinhood, but um, that is mainly because I had Tesla out of M1 Finance and I ended up putting them back in. Now uh, you can see here I'm up $228 um, total, but as far as percentage, it is for sure my highest percentage. Um, after that, we got Apple um, up $290, which is 37%. Uh, both of these companies are going to be splitting their stock or have already split their stock depending on when you're watching this. Um, so that's always great news in the sense that it does kind of help uh, increase the stock prices, not necessarily does anything more to my shares, except for just getting me, you know, extra amount of shares and then lowering the stock price. Um, so, so those are doing over there. Uh, so what I also like to do is see, you know, what are some of my worst performing stocks as of right now? Um, and currently it's going to be NRZ down about 5% or 5.4% at $17.77. Um, this has kind of jumped back and forth between being in the positive and the negative. And then we have AT&T down 2%, which is $12.35. So these two are currently my worst performers, um, but they are dividend focused as well too. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, uh, and on that front, usually what I'll do is if I come in here and look at what is, you know, maybe down for a little bit, I'll kind of consider those options as far as putting a little extra towards them. Um, I did that with, uh, with Lockheed Martin a couple months ago when they were actually down in my portfolio for quite some time. 
So I was starting to buy into them a little bit more here and there. Their, their price stock is really high. So I was putting in $20 versus like a dollar or two here and there. So it was significantly more, but because of the stock price, it doesn't feel like, you know, I'm buying a lot of it. Uh, but overall, it was great because now the stock is back up and that extra money I was putting in has, of course, helped out in the increase in value for the overall portfolio. Um, so let's kind of go over some of the stocks that I'm interested in buying for the next little while. And again, these things can change, um, you know, if halfway through the month, something else drops dramatically, I might kind of shift my focus. And I think that's important to note because a lot of people here on YouTube kind of talk about, you know, the stocks are going to be buying for the next month, but there are things that can change. So keep that in mind. So I think AD, uh, ADP might be one of these companies that I'm going to be buying into. So I'm currently down only 1.77%. Um, and so what I'll do is actually go into my portfolio here. I have them in my industries in industries industries uh, right over here and you're gonna see uh, right now I currently have two hundred and eighty seven dollars in this account um, my average uh, price is hundred forty two dollars and twelve cents and the current uh, stock price is one thirty nine sixty one so I definitely will be dollar cost averaging if I buy more into them I have about two point zero five shares uh, which is uh, not too shabby honestly uh, their dividend yield is still pretty up there as far as the ADP goes uh, because it, once their stock hopefully goes back up to where it was in their highs, uh, that dividend yield is going to go down pretty dramatically. So I definitely am looking into this one. If I go on to SeekingAlpha.com, uh, this is what I like to use to kind of gauge some information here on companies that I'm looking at buying more into. So if I go into them here, uh, let me get all this here. So we have ADP. Uh, you could see right over here their where's their 52 week high is $182.32. So we're definitely quite a bit below. Uh, they definitely haven't recovered in the same way as a lot of the other tech companies have. Um, you know, there's uh, like Apple, Microsoft and all those, they've definitely skyrocketed up as far as value where this one is definitely kind of just staying put. Now, I still really like their books and I believe that their dividends are going to look really good because I am, you know, still caring about dividends um, as well as growth. So I'm kind of twofold on that front. Uh, their payout ratio has jumped up a little bit, of course, uh, but their dividend yield, like I said earlier, is still looking pretty good overall. Um, I am planning on getting a dividend payout here very shortly from them. So I'm excited about that. So that is one company I am looking at buying into for the next month. Now, another company I'm going to be getting more into, let me go back into my main screen here, um, is going to be my growth category. Uh, so if we jump in here, now my growth category is Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. Uh, but of course, um, it's a little tough with some of these just because they are, for the most part, at their 52 weeks high, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. Some of them are like way past, like Tesla. Um, I have been buying into them while they were in the process of splitting their stock, which as of this recording, it still hasn't officially split. But you can see here, my average share price is $14.15, and the current sale price, or the current price on the stock is uh, $2,153. So... That's pretty insane. I just love Tesla in general, so I still have them. But I'm looking at probably doing a little bit more with Facebook here in the next month. Um, right now, I have just a shy over one share, which I'm actually pretty happy about. Uh, my average price is two thirty-eight eighty-three, and my actual and the actual stock price right now is three hundred three ninety-one. Um, part of the reason that uh, I'm looking to buy more into them is. You know, obviously, I think they're uh, everything that they have going on right now is still going steady. But um, right here, you can see their market cap is 800 billion. Um, so I think as they kind of inch closer and closer to that one trillion dollar marker, that might just set them up for a little bit more of a boost. Um, not necessarily anything intrinsic uh, as far as value, but just more just the fact that they're there. Similar to when those companies are splitting their stocks, even though nothing changes you know, value wise, uh, people just perceive things to be going well for that company. So I kind of see that as a positive thing. Um, and plus, I, I still think Facebook is going to be around for a long time to come. Um, so I'm definitely going to be putting in a little bit more there. I'm still up quite a bit, actually, if I go back in here. So I'm still up $65, which is not the most in the world. But I mean, for 300 bucks total, uh, putting in 239, not too, too sad about that. 
by any stretch. Now, before I go on to the next one, if you are somebody who wants to support the channel, uh, I'm a big fan of refinancing student loans to help you lower your interest rates and possibly save some extra money every month to either invest, pay down debt, or anything else you want to do. So if you want to support the channel, check out the link down below if you want to refinance your student loans and possibly lower your interest rates if you still got those loans hanging around. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get back into this actual stock list and see what else we're looking at purchasing. So we're going to go into our tech pie over here. And in our tech pie, we have Apple, Microsoft, and AT&T. Um, if I go back onto M1 Finance right here, or not M1 Finance, sorry, Seeking Alpha, um, I'm in my portfolio that I put together here, and I wanted to show you uh, something right over here. So they have this like 52-week range, so you can kind of see uh, the highs and lows for every company. So you can see with AT&T, uh, their low is uh, 2608. Let me actually put a little marker on there. 2608. Um, and then their high is 3970. And they're well below even like the mid range of their 52 weeks. So there's still a lot of opportunity. But my only thing is, I don't know if I want to keep on investing because if I go into at and I have 20 shares currently right now at an average share price of $3.60. So I'm right on par with where the market is still. Um, so, I mean, it would be dollar cost averaging, but not by much. Um, and I mean, the dividend yield is really, really nice. But I actually believe that Microsoft, even though they are at their 52 week high, let me go see where they're at. Microsoft, yeah, they're they're at $222.09 as their 52 week high. And what would, it, what would I just say, 222? 221 is where they're currently at. So they're like about a dollar under their 52 week average. But I still think that they have a lot of opportunity. And even if the market goes down, because I am buying in, you know, fractional shares here on M1 Finance, as you can see, I have 4.63 shares. Uh, average uh, share price is $196.37. Um, I still think Microsoft is going to have lots of opportunities. So I'm probably going to go through the process of wanting to build up larger shares. And even if the market goes down and it drops and Microsoft goes down with it, um, I'll just dollar cost average even more then and kind of increase that that much more to have more shares. Uh, you know, I believe that one, you know, their current price as well as some opportunities like purchasing TikTok and a lot of the things that they're really focusing in on, like getting rid of Internet Explorer and really, you know, fine tuning what brings them in the most value, um, I think is going to be in really, really important for their, their actual company and where they're going to go. So for me, I see that as a great opportunity for the market to keep going up for them, as well as with everybody splitting their stocks recently, there's a chance that Microsoft might split their stock in the future. And as I mentioned earlier, stock splitting doesn't really do a lot, but what it can actually do is just increase the value because everybody else is interested in purchasing as well too. So just something for me to consider. I mean, their market cap is 1.6 trillion. I mean, it's crazy to think that, you know, we just recently got a $1 trillion company and now we have multiple. I think we have how many? Let me go to the research tab here and take a look. So we have one, two, three, four, four companies over a trillion dollars and one of them at 2.1, which is insane, to be honest. And then we have, like we talked about earlier, Facebook potentially getting up there. Uh, Tesla still has got a ways to go, but... Um, overall, I mean, that's just mind blowing to think that, you know, that Microsoft is, you know, well over uh, $1 trillion and inching up closer and closer to two. So that's, of course, another company, like I said, I want to definitely be buying more into just because I feel like the opportunity is going to be there for me. Um, if I go back into my holdings here and switch back over to my unrealized gains. Uh, so the other company that I like and you're going to see here is going to be Aflac. Uh, they are, for me personally, down 0.73 currently, which is almost $4 altogether. So right now, if I go into that section right over here under my financials, uh, we're going to see Aflac currently. So this one I'm going to be purchasing a little bit more into for the next month. I currently have already 14.66 shares of the company, averaging about $36.72. Um, so even if I dollar cost average right now, because their current price is 36.45, it's not going to lower it by almost anything for the most part, but I'm still getting in at a good dividend yield. And I think if I go back here, let's take a look at their 52 weeks. Let me load this up here so you guys can see this. So you can see right over here, 
they were up towards like the 50, yeah, 55 dollars and seven cents was their 52 week high. They're almost in the center of their 52 week range. So I still think that they have a lot of opportunity for not just the dividend yield because it's nice, uh, but also too just for the value coming back up. Um, so I'm going to keep on investing a little bit more into them. And then I would say the next one that I want to be buying a little bit more into for the next month is going to be in my retail sector here. And that is going to be with Ross. Uh, so I have Ross right over here. So Ross stores, I own 2.94 shares. Um, and if you don't know, by the way, M1 Finance does these fractional shares, which is why I love them. Um, and I can also, oop, I covered up the shares. Uh, so they do the fractional shares. They also let me do like groups like you saw here. Um, so if you guys are interested in trying out M1 Finance, like this service that I personally use, I'll also have a link for them in the show notes down below. It does help support the channel. And I have tons of tutorials on my other channel where I go over so many different ways to utilize the app and kind of get the most bang for your buck with it. So anyways, kind of coming back to this. So with Ross, uh, my average share price is 88.8. Um, and then the current price is 89.86. So it was, I'm a little bit in the positive right now. You can see three dollars and man, I'm like putting my lines everywhere. Three dollars and thirty-seven cents over here. Uh, but I still think they have a lot of opportunity. Um, I think they're just taking a big beating with everything going on in the world. Um, but usually, uh, you can see with Ross and its history that when the market is down, usually the or the economy is down, I should say. Usually, when the economy is down. Ross tends to still do very well because they are a low cost uh, retail store. So people are still interested in buying because they want to save as much money as they can. Um, so it's a little interesting that they're still down as much as they are. I mean, I've been into Ross stores. I love shopping there. I've mentioned that before. And like the shelves are like getting empty. So part of it right now, I believe, is the fact that like they're having a hard time with like their production line, maybe as far as getting things into this, not their production line, but getting um their logistics in order maybe to get more stuff on the shelves but overall um, i still think that they're going to have some great opportunity and um, i mean you could see here like in their 10 years they're up 618 percent like it's ridiculous i mean if they continue to go back where they were before and have that same level of growth obviously that's not indicative of how things are going to go but if they do i mean it's going to be some great opportunity for me so i am planning on putting a little bit more into ross on my m1 finance account so that way i can have hopefully some really good growth you can see there's been a couple times i was buying into them just when the market was going down so i can get some really good valuable um price points over there for purchasing them obviously i'm doing in small increments um and i think that's a big point for me personally just because for a lot of people, eleven thousand four hundred dollars might seem like a lot, and it is. But I started off with a hundred bucks in this account. Like, let me go show you. Like, look, a hundred dollars back in June of twenty nineteen, and you know, a year and a half later, I'm up at eleven thousand um, dollars, and that's a lot to do with just being consistent and you know, practicing what I what I'm showing you guys here, which is investing small amounts every single week when I can. I started with a hundred, and then I was doing like ten bucks a week. And then I started bumping up to 20 bucks a week. And as I felt more comfortable, I went to 30 and so on and so forth. And that just helped me get to a point where, you know, you can actually start making a huge impact with the money you have because you start feeling more confident in what you're doing um, and you become more educated as well. Now, I want you to keep on learning with investing and keep growing with your portfolio. So check out my next video right over here. My name is Dennis and I will see you in that next video.